Did you know that not paying attention to the licenses of the open source code you include in your project can actually jeopardize the entire program and even your business? Yeah, you actually open yourself and your business up to significant liability if you do that. You know, I'm not a lawyer and you should absolutely talk to one if you need to, but we will take a look here at how to how you can evaluate and manage the software you include in its licenses to reduce that risk and liability in a pretty easy manner. So if you've ever been a part of an acquisition like I have, then you'll probably have run into the lawyers asking for a list of all the open source software used in your project and the licenses it was used under. This is because not following those contracts opens up the owner of the business to legal liability. The owner can be sued for breach of contract. Buyers of companies want to know how much liability they are taking on. And if you're the owner of a project, then you will also probably want to know how much liability you currently have. Companies have successfully been sued and lost or settled for being in breach of these contracts. So what actually is software licensing? Uh, it, it's a actually it's a, it's a legal contract um, between you as a user of the software in your program and the provider of the source code. So like if you use someone else's software, then you must abide by the contract provided in the license with that software. In in our programs we generally reuse a lot of people's work. And I think that's great. Um, it's, it's really one of the things that I, I love about software. Um, you know, we include libraries and we copy paste code all the time, right? You know, stack overflow, anyone? <laughs> I mean, you know, I do love that feature of software. I also know it's really important to pay attention to the license. So at least in the United States, all code is by default under copyright to the creator, even if it's just posted to a blog, for example. So what software can you safely include in your project? Well, of course, it depends. Um, we're going to take a quick look at the common license types first, and then we'll discuss how you can figure out their combinations and, and what you can actually include in your project. So there are four different types of, so I think of like four sort of main different types of software licenses. Um, you have copyleft, uh, permissive, public domain, and proprietary software. So copyleft uh, gives you the right to freely distribute and modify the code, but all versions of the code must carry a compatible copyleft license. So to me, I think of this license as being focused primarily on protecting the end user freedom. So like the, the users of your software, that's, that's really what this license is focused on, protecting their freedoms. Um, on the other hand, permissive licenses are focused more on protecting creator freedoms. So like, as the creator of a software program, permissive licenses are designed around your freedoms. They're not as interested or not interested at all in the freedoms of the end user. Um, they allow things like relicensing and even making open source code closed source. Um, common permissive licenses are MIT, Apache, MPL, and, and some BSDs. Public domain, uh, however, gives up all provider rights. What this generally means depends on the country or countries involved. Um, it's kind of complicated, to be honest. And finally, we have proprietary software, which uses copyright in a traditional manner and allows the provider to retain all rights. Provider, again, being uh, you know, the, whoever created and provides the like, library or code that you're including in your project. Um, yeah, so now that we know about the common types of software licenses, 
you know, the obvious next question is, what should we do with that knowledge? You know, what can we do with it to, to actually make our projects better and, and have less of this legal liability? Um, I think, you know, this, we can take an example of, say, uh, a library you want to include in a React project. So this is uh, something that, you know, in the end will actually get distributed to users when they download your React program from a website. Um, so to do that, we first have to make sure we have a clear understanding of what our project is licensed under. Um, where, you know, where and how this library we want to include will be used and what license or licenses the library is provided with. So step one, figuring out what is your project's license. Um, if you haven't defined a license, then by default it is proprietary. You have copyright, you are the provider, you retain all the rights. On the other hand, if you have defined a different license, then this should be clearly spelled out in the root of your source code or you know, somewhere associated with your source code. Um, and once you have you know, that, once you know what your license actually is, then we can look at the license of the source code we want to include. So if the library comes with multiple licenses, you generally get to choose which one you want to use the library under. That doesn't mean that um, all licenses will be compatible with your use. So you need to be aware of that, but generally it means you get to choose. Um, and if there is no specified license, then that library is proprietary or that code. Um, it, you cannot use it in your project unless you get permission from the provider, the creator of that project. Like you can't just go ahead and use it. You need permission. But let's say the library is open source. Can you use it? I mean, this is the most common case, I think, for a lot of us. And we want to use a library on NPM or wherever, um, or Ruby Gem or you know wherever. Like usually, these are open source libraries, and we want to know: can we use it in our project? Well, it depends. Um, you'll want to talk to a lawyer or or do a web search, to be honest, um, about the compatibility of your license and the license of the open source project. Um, but we can certainly take a look at you know, handling a lot of this ourselves, even if we're not lawyers. And that's what we're going to do here. So for the most um, standard licenses, you should actually be able to get an idea of like compatibility just by doing a simple web search. Like for example, uh, GPL v3 compatible with MIT. Um, you know, again, this isn't the same as talking to your lawyer, but you should be able to get a general idea. And if you do this in general, you should have a much lower you know, liability on your project. So yeah, if your code, if your project is proprietary and you are distributing the code, like saying a React project, then you just need to make sure you follow the terms and conditions of the license. And like for a React project again, this means when people visit your web page, they're going to download it. And you actually need, generally, you need to actually provide the licenses of included open source libraries. And for copyleft libraries, you need to provide unminified uh, versions of that library's code. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of like details that like. You should be able to figure out if you just do a quick web search on, you know, using that type of library in your project, what do you need to do to, to be compliant? And, um, you know, I just want to highlight that, especially for web programs, this, this still matters. You still need to pay attention to it. But it shouldn't be too hard to do um, just by looking at a summary of the license or, or doing a quick search, like I mentioned before. Okay, okay, I know this all sounds really overwhelming and boring and not what you want to do and you just want to write some code. Um, but in my experience, like just spending some time, you know, up front doing this, like when you first get into it, um, will be enough to get you in the right ballpark. And once you've done this a few times, uh, with the common licenses and combinations, it really won't take so much time. Like for me, most of the time, I'm just like, oh, hey, what is the license of this library I want to include? Oh, I know that's compatible because I've looked it up before. Like it's really not too bad, but there is some upfront cost. I do really want to point out though that it's important to remember that this applies 
to code you want to copy paste from Stack Overflow or a random blog or even the documentation of an open source project. In all those cases, you need to first figure out which license that code is under. All of it is covered by a copyright or license of some kind. You can't just copy paste willy nilly as much as we might want to and I suspect many of you do. And finally, there is one more aspect to this that is really important, I believe, um, that's sort of tangential but still related, and that is attribution. Um, if you include copy-pasted code or code from an open source project or documentation directly in your project, then you should definitely, absolutely, always precede it with a comment that links to the source and details the license the code is under. This will make source code audits much easier and it will make it much easier to ensure your code doesn't have large license liabilities. Um, it, is, it is possible for people to, even if you're distributing compiled code, it is often possible for people to figure out if you copy pasted code from somewhere and you're not following the license, you know? Um, that is absolutely a thing. Uh, so this is, this is important for the long-term health of your project. In summary, make sure to check the license of all libraries and code you want to include in your project. And then just spend some time researching their compatibility. And don't forget to include attribution when appropriate. If you do those things, you should be in a much, much better shape and you'll be less likely to be surprised by a non-compliance lawsuit or a failed acquisition. Woohoo!